In the last video I've showed you how the liquid metal my modding laptop performed after nearly one year. It turned out that even with my custom nickel plated heatsink, the liquid metal kind of dried out and left a nasty hard residue on a heatsink and CPU IHS. Of course liquid metal can't dry out, but its gallium can be created into the heatsink due to a different electric potential. And the leftover materials are solid at room temperature. Those solid residues are mostly cosmetic and do not influence performance as Gamers Nexus wrote on their website. So what's left is to get a proof for ourselves. Clean off the solidified residues from the heatsink and perform another benchmark run with fresh liquid metal. But here's the point. How do I remove the solid residues without scratching the surface and damaging the heatsink's nickel plating? So grinding it off with sandpaper isn't suitable. I came up with two methods. Some years ago, the Bauer showered how it can be done using hydrochloric acid, which should work fine and it's also what I want to try out at the end of this video too. However, handling acid isn't recommendable to all users because there's a serious health risk. Unfortunately, my method I want to try out today isn't recommendable either. But I've never seen anyone doing it before, so it still might be interesting for some of you. My method to remove the solid residue simply involves heat. The idea is that the liquid metal alloy lost some of its chemical elements because of ion migration. This way it formed a new alloy which got a higher melting temperature. Then the liquid metal's original melting temperature of roughly 8 degrees centigrade. So I thought it might be possible to melt the residues when I heat up the heatsink. The solid residue's melting temperature should be somewhere in between its components individual melting temperatures. We got tin, gallium and indium in the liquid metal, so the new melting temperature should be somewhere in between theirs. I stripped the heatsink, put it on a heater and slowly raised the temperature. I had no idea which temperature I am looking for. So I decided to abort my attempt just before the heatsink would be damaged because its solar starts to melt at above 130 degrees centigrade. During the heating I've checked the residues with cotton sticks every now and then to see if they get soft. I started at just 35 degrees centigrade but I had to realize soon that it will need a lot more heat. Just before I thought about giving up because the heatsink came closer and closer to the solar's melting temperature there was something happening. Suddenly at 111 degrees centigrade surface temperature, the residues felt a little brittle. After using blunt pliers to scratch gently and without pressure on the surface, the residues just came off very easily. And finally at 114 degrees centigrade, even the cotton swab managed to take off some material. This way I was able to remove most of the hard, bumpy and crystal-like residues until the surface became nearly perfectly flat again. It will remain stained though. The hydrochloric acid as a second method came in useful for the CPU, because for obvious reasons I didn't want to put it on a hot plate for some minutes. 
By the way, it's advisable to wear rubber gloves, a face mask, protection goggles and ventilate the room as good as you can to keep the health risk as low as possible. After dripping on some acid, you can see small bubbles forming immediately, so the acid is doing its job. I tried to remove the residues with cotton swabs and paper towels and found that the acid is working nicely, but needs to be reapplied many many times to remove some of the residues. After a while the acid wasn't able to take off any more of the residues. Even with a 3D printed lapping tool to apply more force, without bending the pins of the CPU there was no further progress possible. Finally it's time to reapply some fresh liquid metal and run some benchmarks again. As you can see, the results didn't change dramatically. There are a little higher temperatures noticeable, but they could just be explainable by the margin of error and different ambient temperatures during the benchmark runs. I think this confirms Gamers Nexus findings. Liquid metal residues do not really influence performance and are mostly cosmetic. Also, I really can't recommend one or the other method, because you risk your health and might damage the heatsink because the temperatures needed are very close to the heatsink solar's melting temperature. So in the end, my nickel plating kind of failed in terms of resisting liquid metal. I wonder if a thicker nickel plating layer would be able to improve that. I still ask myself why my nickel plating failed anyway, since I have told the plating company to aim for 15 micrometers of layer thickness, which is pretty standard in the industry. The only advantage is that stay is the unique look and the corrosion resistance against my sweaty hands. So that's the end of the video. I hope you found it interesting and see you in the next one. Bye!